Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're here at the OpenStack Summit 2016 in Barcelona in Spain. And for this segment, I'm joined by two guests. On my right is Ildiko Vancha, who is Ecosystem Technical Lead at the OpenStack Foundation. Ildiko, welcome and good to meet you. And next to you, last but by no means least, is Mark Collier, who is Chief Operating Officer of the OpenStack Foundation. Welcome, Mark, as well. Welcome to you both. Mark, I'm going to kick off with you. Um, we're here at the OpenStack Foundation, 5,000 developers in one place at one time. It gives the event a certain colouring and ambience, does it not? It's quite a unique experience. Um, it's one of the things that makes OpenStack tick. We get together twice a year at our OpenStack summits all over the world. We've done them in Tokyo, Paris, all over places you can imagine. And being here in Barcelona is just the, the next great, great destination. And 5,000 people working together it has a great vibe to it. My reading of the way that cloudification network transformation is moving is this. When NFV began three and a half, four years ago now, the emphasis was very much on data centers, on enterprise and corporate. Um, and we're now seeing the pendulum swinging or the focus shifting onto telco-based issues. And of course the telco-based issues are very different to that of a data center. So my first question to you is this. Um, do you think that OpenStack and the system as it works now is sufficiently robust to manage what is what the rigorous, the extremely rigorous requirements of a telco environment where you know, when you pick up a phone, whether it's fixed line or mobile, whether it's 5G, 3G, whatever it is, yes. you expect to be able to make contact. Yeah, I do, and I think you know we actually have. There are several carriers that are currently in production with OpenStack, where you know you can you can be having a phone call and not even realize that OpenStack is powering the network behind it. There, there are a number around the world that are actually in production today, and you know as you as you know the requirements for carrier grade are, are kind of unbelievable. I mean, they're they're you just milliseconds you know count and, and nothing can drop. So um, that's been really healthy for OpenStack because OpenStack originated as more of a data center, cl public cloud, private cloud sort of technology, and there has been some concern when we started to get more uh, interest in the, the telecom world of, okay, well, is this going to sort of uh, distract the developers or make the platform somehow like diverge from its original mission? And what's actually happened is, you know, everybody who runs cloud technology wants it to be very reliable. Uh, you can't be you can't be too reliable. Uh, so if you're if you're not a telco, you still get you actually get all these benefits of what's happened with the, the telecom industry coming in and really bringing their super strict requirements. And you know, I think it's it's definitely um, pushed OpenStack into new directions, and it's been it's been really healthy. We actually did a demo here at the OpenStack Summit with uh, Ildico uh, on stage a few couple days ago, and uh, we we showed live how uh, in collaboration with another project called Doctor with the OPNFV um, Foundation. Yep. Uh, we were able to actually have a live call on air on stage uh, and actually uh, cut a fiber optic cable. It was a little bit comedic. We had these giant scissors. And, oh, I heard uh, about this. Yeah, so you know, uh, we, we cut the cord and the, the call continued. So you know, I think that that was showing that you know, we can actually uh, divert around or handle uh, faults. You know, it's a fault management kind of world. I mean, hardware's going to fail, cables are going to get cut in the real world, and you have to be able to handle that. And, and we showed it on st stage, and it was very brave for uh, Ildico to come out there and, uh, and help us do it live. Ildico, I've got a question for you now. You've been sat there very patiently waiting. I'd like to ask you this. Um, what role can OpenStack play in helping service providers transform and virtualize their networks. I'm talking about that from a nuts and bolts perspective and as far as the technology is concerned. What's going on? As Mark just said, OpenStack can serve as, as a base uh, of a system that can fulfill the really strict requirements of, of the telecom industry and telecom segment. And um, we are uh, providing a de facto standard set of APIs uh, to service providers so who consumes OpenStack from a vendor uh, as a cloud platform, uh, they now have a kind of free choice of uh, picking for from the application market. So it's, it's become a more flexible environment by having OpenStack in the picture as we are really focusing much on interoperability. Uh, we also had another demonstration, I think yesterday during the keynote to show how it works. Uh, we also have uh, an OpenStack powered uh, stamp uh, which shows that a certain set of tests 
uh, rent uh, on that platform that a certain vendor offers who, who has this uh, certification. So this is how um, we try to help uh, the telecom industry to, to embrace both open source and cloud. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to stay with you for a minute, but this is a question from both of you. So, sure. Mark, if you'd chime in in a minute. Um, how does OpenStack integrate with other open source initiatives? There are many of them. There's a plethora of them. There seem to be more every week. They're in a cage somewhere breeding, you know. But there's, there's uh, OPNFE, there's Open Daylight, various initiatives, some with open in the title, others not, but still re referencing the same thing. How does that work? So we are integrating both from technology perspective and from people perspective as well because uh, I think we mentioned many times that it's all about people so we really cannot leave this uh, aspect out of, of this picture. So from technology perspective we are offering integration points into our OpenStack networking components so for example you can integrate Open Daylight uh, with OpenStack today already uh, through the uh, ML2 plugin system in, in Neutron which is the code name of the OpenStack networking project. Um, so this is an example of how an SDN controller can fit into the system today. But of course, uh, we would like to be you know, more uh, forward looking and uh, we would like to just serve uh, the broad telecom industry. So this is where OPNFE can come into the picture, uh, which is a community uh, where both telecom uh, uh, service providers, uh, vendors, operators, and um, gathering together with, uh, with enterprise companies. So uh, this way uh, they can um, agree on, on, a, on a roadmap that fits into uh, the telecom perspective. And um, their people are collaborating with our people. So OPNFE Doctor, uh, which Mark just mentioned, is a really great example because they actually, they are working together with many OpenStack projects. So in order to be able to deliver that, that keynote demonstration, uh, they had to add new features to Nova, which is OpenStack Compute, AODH, the alarming service. Uh, they are also using two more components like Congress, the policy enforcement service, and the triage, which provides root cause analysis. So the developers of OPNFV are working together with the developers of OpenStack and they are also having even overlappings between these two developer communities. And um, this is the way how OpenStack gets more robust and even more ready for NFV and telecom use cases. Thank and, you, Mark. Yeah, I would just you know add that you, you mentioned that it seems like there's a, a breeding ground for open source these yeah. days. There's always a new project out yeah. there. One of the things that's so remarkable about that to me is um, I've been in the industry long enough to remember when open source was not the main way people develop <laughs> software. It was kind of the odd oddball. Yeah. And now it's like, incredible. I mean, it's the default way if you want to innovate that companies and communities all over the world actually uh, want to innovate. If you look at like machine learning and AI and some of these really cutting edge things, I think it's remarkable to me that like Facebook, Microsoft, um, Google, they were actually in a race for who could open source their, their AI system faster. You know, like it's a competitive advantage now instead of like sort of an odd, an odd uh, duck. And so if it, in terms of other technologies that are relevant to, uh, you know, to the telecom world, I mean, certainly uh, containers are, are a hot new topic. Topic. They're very applicable in the in the NFV world. Um, things like Docker, you know, help you package up uh, the different dependencies and, and make uh, management faster and, and more reliable. So we see containerization coming into OpenStack um, through integration with those technologies. And then the other uh, aspect I would say is bare metal. So cloud has traditionally been synonymous with virtualization. So you have you know virtualized. Uh, hypervisors and so forth. But a lot of people don't know that OpenStack actually can manage bare metal as well. We have a project called Ironic. So when you combine, you know, not only uh, do you have, um, you know, people trying to apply cloud technologies and make them reliable and fast, uh, that, that set of what we consider cloud technologies actually includes things that really help for performance, which matters a ton to telco. So being able to run on bare metal and still manage the infrastructure through an OpenStack API, the same API, and then be able to containerize the different microservices. Those are some uh, all, all other kind of trends that uh, are really helping OpenStack kind of rise to the occasion for this market. And Illico, would you say then that as far as OpenStack is concerned, there are, is now in existence a sort of a set of what are basically de facto API standards which have come about as a result of the OpenStack work? Is that what's happened? It is exactly what's happening in the sense of um, OpenStack is 
is a large software package uh, that vendors are offering in the form of, of distributions, but the set of APIs uh, are the same. And uh, before going through uh, the standardization period, how it uh, worked, especially in the telecom area uh, in the past, uh, that first writing down how the API should look like and then moving to the implementation phase, we are kind of switching a little bit and we are going through the implementation phase and also we are going through both the automated machine testing and uh, and testing by all our users and all the operators where OpenStack is already in production um, and this way we we have a set of APIs where, where we actually know that this is going to work and uh, the standardization part can uh, either go in parallel uh, with the development process or with a little shift uh, in parallel and after it. So basically, we first try whether it works or not and then document it and then uh, having kind of a certain uh, standardized set of APIs. We're seeing a shift to software-defined absolutely everything <laughs> by the looks of it. Um, so, but some networks, uh, you know, the, in the past it was a sort of fixed functionality that you got and it was costly and it was proprietary and all the rest of it. One of my readings of NFE is that, as we well know, the service providers went to the vendors and said, you're not locking us in like this anymore, thank you very much. We'd like a bit more freedom now. Yes. Uh, so we're, gonna, we're going to say we would like this and we want those including in your specs and in your APIs and everything you, you, you can actually we want that. Is that what's happening now? Yes, I, I think it's, it's interesting. Um, not only is the, the fact that it's becoming software defined opening up this opportunity for, uh, for the, a more uh, deeper engagement earlier on with uh, the end users, which are the, the carriers, because it's open source software development, it's software defined in an open source way, they can actually get involved before even any code's written. And that, that is a very different model. It actually, frankly, requires a cultural shift inside of these carriers who are used to traditionally sort of buying you know, off the shelf and you know, negotiating is more of a procurement process than like a true kind of co-development or, or uh, you know, productization um, in partnership. And it's, it's a much different role. It's uh, more collaborative. And it, it puts everybody more on an even even playing field, which is probably a little scary for some of the, the the vendors that are used to the things the way things used to be. But I think people now are accepting like this is it's a, it's a new world. Um, you're going to have the vendors in the same sessions with the, with the people they're going to turn around and sell to, talking about what they want the version to look like six months from now. And that's happening right here in this building. And it's a sea change in the way, uh, essentially, the product, which turns into a service, gets built. I think it's very healthy, and I think it's exciting, and I think it's just a better way to develop technology. Well, we, it certainly is developing. I've never seen, I've been in this game a long time, and I've never seen anything develop as fast as NFV. From nothing to go, go, just astonishing. And we will watch with great interest what happens next month and over the, until the next um, OpenStack and those thereafter. But until then, Mark Collier and Illico Vancher, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.